This podcast is brought to you by Aspers Casino Newcastle, home of the £4 pint on match day. That's all Newcastle home games and any televised Newcastle fixture. The offer applies from midday until midnight on all draft beers. Be gamble aware, over 18s only. Visit begambleaware.org. Uh, be drink aware and for details and T's and C's, visit aspersnewcastle.co.uk. It's the True Faith Newcastle United podcast. Newcastle have gone to Fulham and won by a goal to nil to cap off a brilliant week results-wise and put Newcastle firmly in the frame for sixth place in Europa League qualification this season. An unbelievable win. And I'm Alex and I'm joined by Sai, Charlotte and Stephen Ord to talk to you about the game, what happened and why. We're on Patreon. It's between three and eight pounds a month. We'd be absolutely fucking buzzing if you came and joined us. Now is the time Newcastle have won with a full week to run up and preview Spurs, come and bask in this victory with us uh, through the podcast on that platform. Si, great win for Newcastle. You must be buzzing. Um, yeah, I suppose so. I suppose so, yeah. It is. It is. It is it's is. it been a good, good up and down week, hasn't it? Um, we've we've had three games where we probably should have won all three, shouldn't we? But we've had three games where also there was periods of those games where it was absolutely diabolical. And the first 30 minutes yesterday were, were diabolical. But... We'd probably deserve to win all three, and we're, we're a bit unlucky not to have nine points at this point in time from those three games. So yeah, very pleased. I think that um, the season's very much coming to a, the business end of the old cliche, but I think we're, we're really starting to hit a little bit of um, form and, and getting a bit of the rub of the green. So yeah, when, not everything's perfect, but we're getting the results and we're, we're grinding things out. So yeah, really pleased that with the you know the eleven players we have to choose from, we're still finding results. And <laughs> yeah, it's it's it was good. Yesterday was fine. Yes, also feeling good. I think um, I think in terms of the season where we're at, sort of taking stock of the fact that, as I mentioned there, we have basically only eleven players to choose from, um, may- maybe twelve if we're if we're feeling if we're feeling generous. But the, the fact that we are sitting in eighth place, only one point off sixth place at the moment, is 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 mental. Yeah. If you think about this season and 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 it as a whole, and then and then if you think about it just in terms of yesterday's game, it was a really weird game. It was not very good for the first half hour or so. At Fulham were all over us. Um, the the ancient Willian was the the best player on the pitch. It was very very. It was a bit confusing. It was yeah. confusing watching it after after this week and, and we'll, we'll talk about that, but um, watching us grow into the game and, 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 and getting the win, it just felt like, oh, finally things are going our way a little bit more now. Finally, we're getting, as you say, a little bit of luck, um, not with VAR, but with kind of our performances and, and the results that we're getting. And, and it does feel like momentum might just be shifting in our favor. As you say, we get to the end of the season and, um, and we really, really do have something to play for here. We, we, there is, there is still so much at stake. Um, and that's quite an exciting place to be. Yeah. Massive win and massive week, which we'll come on to, but I also just want to kind of talk up the validity of this result by itself. Fulham, best home record outside of the top six. We've gone there and won twice this season. That is only Martin uh, Martin Dubravka's second clean sheet since he's come into the team. Uh, Funnily enough, the other one was also against Fulham, but 10-man Fulham at home. And Newcastle, um, to to go there and win and to finish the game as strongly as they did to kind of control the game past the first 30, I just think it's actually up there with one of Eddie Howe's best wins because there's so much... There's so much going against them. There's 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 the, the, the disappointment of of Tuesday night, and to come into this one to do what you have to do in the Premier League. Ultimately, you, you, you're always going to go away from home in the Premier League and have to face a really tricky spell where the opposition are on top. Just turns out that was all in the first 20, 30 minutes, rather than the rest of the game. But to go there and to win, to keep a clean sheet, to take us into you know the, the final seven games with with so much possibility, that's the exciting thing. They've given themselves a chance of finishing sixth in Europa League. Doesn't necessarily mean they will. I just think they've they've really, really come from quite a dark place post game Tuesday to go win that game and to keep a clean sheet at a place like Craven Cottage, which as I've alluded to, is a really hard place to go in the Premier League, which is kind of lost, I think, in on a lot of people. Um one of the one of the best away wins of the season of course our away form up until recently was one of the worst if not the worst in the league alongside Sheffield United well they've now won you know at um at Villa at at Forest and now at Fulham as well that bodes so well for the remaining away games at Burnley Man United Palace and Brentford we've got four 
away games left, three home games, and the fact that we can go away from home and not just win, but win and keep a clean sheet fairly comfortably after the opening 20, just one of the best wins of the season for me, and, and it just makes the rest of the season so exciting. Stephen? Well, it should probably be back-to-back clean sheets if it weren't for Paul Dummett's mm-hmm. uh, headlock on Ashley Young. So and that, <laughs> that is a good sign because like defensive solidity isn't something that we've had for the past three months, and that's like a real improvement um, on, on what we saw before. I think my view on it would be that uh, do we not get the late goal from Bruno? And obviously that's an if and a but. Because obviously I'm buzzing. You, you win a game of football, you're obviously absolutely chuffed that your team has won. But um, it's massively clouded by the outcome rather than the performance. Um, and I suppose sometimes it's better to play really, really badly and win and than to play really, really well and get a draw. Um, and I know that's football because football is judged on results. And I can see Sai smiling already going like, but uh, I suppose you want your team to play really, really well and win. Every week you want them to be like Manchester City um, and play really well and win. I thought we did really, really, really appallingly badly in the first 30 minutes. As in, if we'd been two or three nil down, I don't think we could really argue with it. Yeah. And I don't think we can just gloss over that and go, oh, that's fine, because they didn't score. Like, if we play like that against Spurs at home, we will be two or three nil down, because they've got better players than Fulham. Um, and I suppose my argument is about, not argument, my point is that I, I think we did really well, we got the result. To be fair, we probably should have won two nil, because there's nothing wrong with no. Fabian Scher's goal. Um, and... A bit like Wolves, they could feel aggrieved for getting a goal disallowed by far. But Newcastle have done something very un Newcastle like in a bit big club in that they've not played very well and gone and won a game of football. And that is, for me, very unusual to see kind of us not win, sorry, to win a game when we don't really deserve to win the game of football. It it's almost not... feels like you think we didn't win, Steve. <laughs> is, is your glass very half weird, full yeah. by any chance? <laughs> well, no, yeah, it is slightly Empty. half full. Um, I just. I, I know we won, but the manner of the win maybe isn't necessarily what you would want to be. I think I felt very differently about West Ham than I've felt about this, in that there was the euphoria of coming back into it and fighting and scoring three or four types. Um, But the Fulham one, I don't know. It's not half full. Maybe it's like three quarters full. Um, Do we not mean half empty? That is what I meant. Yeah. 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 I th- maybe quarter empty then. You've uh, got three quarters of a pint and you think it's half empty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. I'll, I'll disagree with you slightly, Stephen, and what I thought Newcastle did yesterday, I agree with you about the other 20 minutes, if Fulham or two goes up, it, it's a fair reflection of their domination, but isn't probably a fair reflection on the chances they actually created and, uh, uh, and you know, the work Dubravka has to do. Yesterday reminded me a little bit, not entirely, of how Newcastle used to be pre-takeover when they play a good a good team at home. They'd come out of that game thinking, played really well, controlled the game, dominated for a period, and we've lost 3-1 at home or 2-0 at home. And that's because what Newcastle were better at than Fulham yesterday was their work in both boxes. And so Fulham in the middle of the pitch, great, well done lads, pretty passing, um, passing around Newcastle, some nice flicks, kind of getting to the edge of the penalty box very comfortably, very well. And then Newcastle dealt with all of that pretty much to the fact that Fulham, apart from maybe one dragged shot, you'd say there isn't there isn't a moment where anything Fulham actually do should result in a goal. And then you look at Newcastle's work at the end of the pitch in Fulham's box, and Newcastle A score twice, have the better chances, their goalkeeper makes the better saves. There's a couple of shots that go just just the wrong side of the post. And I think I listened to some to some Fulham uh, commentary post game from some Fulham fans and without articulating it as as I have there in terms of uh, this reminds me of being them almost like a bottom 13 Premier League side against a good team they said the same thing well it feels like we're dominated but we didn't actually deserve to win the game and that's frustrating and I think that that's the most encouraging thing for me is that Newcastle have got a a back five out there that probably only has one player that would get in a lot of Newcastle teams maybe two and burn but in a different position so they've got a, a back five there um which has shown a lot of its, its quality. And they've still managed, I think, to, to kind of really control their own penalty box really well. And at the other end of the pitch, they look far more threatening than Fulham to score after 30 minutes. So I agree with you and uh, to an extent about you know the level of performance and also the fact that Bruno doesn't get that goal and we're sat here analysing a nil-nil. Maybe it's a completely different conversation. But this this is the beauty of of being so good when it matters, where it matters. And the fact, this brings me back to conversations people have been having 
in weeks gone by. Oh, end the season now. The rest of the season doesn't matter. Just get us to next season. Fuck that. Like, this this is the beauty of football. Like, everyone's absolutely fucking buzzing. One goal changes everything. But in the context of the whole week, and, and, and in fact, the recent form, Newcastle's recent form is good, um, bar kind of an aberration at, at Chelsea. Um, Newcastle, all of a sudden, despite the mountain of injuries, look like a team that could finish sixth. And I, I don't think you get there by accident or by mistake. And I think... To take it back to what I said earlier, that that just even watching the game, I thought if we if we nick this, this is like us playing Mancini's Manchester City in 2010 at home, where we went on Boxing Day and we battered them, but we got beat three one, and you don't really understand how it's because they were better than us in both boxes. And if we can continue to be better in both boxes than kind of lower lower division or lower in the division opposition for the rest of the season, we probably will finish sixth. So that's why I think it's one of the best wins. I'm not too concerned about the performance, particularly first twenty. I think if you if you take a step back to where we were, well, before the West Ham game, certainly, just after going out the FA Cup, and like you say, the last league game, we'd conceded three shoddy goals at Chelsea. It's like, we can't defend, we're out the FA Cup, the season's going nowhere, we're about eight points from sixth. Journey forward, eight days. I mean, I suppose you could, you could start this point from the, the 70th minute of the West Ham game, couldn't you? But um, it's all over. And then to where we are now, I think you've got to give tremendous credit to Eddie Howe and the players. You know, the, the defence, like you say, that he's put out that's kept a clean sheet, that we had no hope of, uh, of not conceding. I think uh, anyone talking about this game before yesterday would have said there will be goals in it for both teams. There's no chance Newcastle keep a clean sheet and we've done it. Uh, and I agree. I don't, for all of the kind of dominance Fulham had in the first half, I don't think Dubravka's had to make any saves that you wouldn't expect him to make. And beyond that point, it was a fairly even game. And I, I honestly think we deserve to win it, just like we deserve to win against Everton on Tuesday. And just like we deserved on the balance of the full game against mm-hmm. West Ham to win the game. So that is, for me, that's a turnaround in form. That's a turnaround in in kind of belief and, and confidence in the team. And I think it's going in the right direction and all those reasons. I think how and the players he has left deserve so much credit for, for what they've done in the last eight days. It's great to see that we can actually, we can play solid football in different ways. Again, I've been Eddie Howe's often criticised for only having plan A, but it mm. felt like there were three different plans in the three different games. And maybe it's the quality of the opposition, but... Uh, I, th- I, th- I thought Everton was a really, really, really solid home performance bar that aberration. Um, and then we've gone away and we've managed to get a Wonder win, which Wonder wins a massive away from home. So I, th- I, th- I think that does have to be praised because that is really solid defensively and offensively from Newcastle. Yeah, and the fact that Newcastle have such a consequential week ahead of them before West Ham and the, in, in the, the results are there now for us to analyse, I think the point that it's almost three different performances and two at home, one away, which is, you kind of always going to expect that. But to compare Newcastle's approach yesterday, at, even at nil-nil at the start of the game to what we saw against West Ham, it, it, how, how has clearly kind of asked them to play different ways across the week. And the thing about yesterday, so I think the second half against Fulham and the first half against Everton are the most promising because there's an element of control that's just been missing for months and months and months about Newcastle, even when they've had good results, maybe apart from the Wolves game at home. But even, you know, you look at that Forest game, even you, you look at the Villa game in stages, Newcastle aren't in control of the game. They're doing a lot of good things, but they're not in control of the game. They're not making the opposition do what they want them to do. They definitely did that yesterday, second half against Fulham and first half against Everton. And it's the fact that Howe has now managed almost to get that tune out of this set of players you know, I had my doubts whether he could do it definitely, but he but he has done it, he has managed it. And whatever happens from here, seven games to go, to put themselves in this position where they can get six, um, is pretty remarkable because you know, Howe's done some pretty amazing things as Newcastle manager, but it, and I'm not gonna go there yet, and it's it's one for the future. But if he does manage to get this version and this set of players to six in the league, it's probably gonna be up there with the finishing eleventh when being bottom of the league after fifteen games and um, getting them in the Champions League the following season but we can have that conversation if and when it happens it hasn't happened yet it might not happen and we, uh, we'll we have to see what, what the future brings starting with Spurs next week because when we play Spurs we've got another three game week which again will be very consequential let's talk about the game itself and and I suppose we should start with the, the team selection because team sheet comes out and Elliot Anderson drops to the bench Harvey Barnes drops to the bench two of Newcastle's strongest performers against Everton uh, and against West Ham, for that matter, even though they came off the bench. And so you were, you were pretty um, certain at the time, and probably even more certain now, that it was the right call by Lee Howe, and it's actually contributed in a major way to how Newcastle have won this game. 
I think um, I feel like I'm in the minority before most games at the moment where I don't have a huge meltdown about the team selection. I just kind of trust that the manager's got a plan and and I think that plan came to fruition. Um, for those who do have a patron subscription on the preview, I said, is it better to keep a couple of the lads on the bench in mm. Barnes and Anderson in theory um, so that we've got something off the bench? Because what you don't want is to need Murphy and Longstaff to come on the game, to, to win, the, win the game in the second half. So having something back makes sense. Um, the Premier League is, is being... Is, is evolved subs matter you know every team makes three to five subs nearly every game now and it makes a massive difference that 60 to 90 minute period if, as to what you can do to impact the game uh, so i think whilst i understand the argument for getting your best 11 players on the pitch from the start i understand the well i think how has been vindicated in, in keeping barnes uh, as an impact sub for this game i, I agree he should be playing more football as time goes on but he's, he's he's been out for a long time same with anderson he's protecting them i suppose the only caveat to that is is he not protecting willick as well because then what was going on there but we'll come back to that but yeah I thought we grew into the game I think you've got to remember that this Fulham side have just beaten Spurs 3-0 at home they've just beaten Brighton 3-0 at home we probably thought this is going to be tough maybe we just need to see how it goes and then and then try and nick it I think that's that was the game plan it was absorb the pressure tire them out and whilst the first 30 minutes was horrible to watch I'm not going to disagree we ultimately kept them at bay and, and did enough to kind of see us through that period and whilst we did have that kind of weird Eddie Howe bollocking uh, publicly um <laughs> it, it, it felt like maybe that was just it was just the um, intensity that wasn't there it wasn't the plan that was that wasn't working um so yeah I think it was the absolute right call I thought Anderson changed the game when he came on I thought Barnes was excellent for the 20 minutes again we've seen Barnes start games and I think he, he was absolutely fine last week um but did sort of tire towards the end so if you need him to get you a late goal so, so often as he does I thought he was very very involved in our kind of endeavors to get that, that to get that winner um, so yeah, I, I thought that the way we approached the game was perfect. I'm fine with the team selection. I totally get it. And I think we all need to give Eddie Howe a round of applause for this one. A round of applause. Can I ask you <laughs> what you do against Spurs? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he's just going to wait for Eddie Howe to tell him. He, he trusts him. He what trusts I, yeah, him. what I won't do is, is shit my pants if the, if the team <laughs> selection isn't what, um, isn't what I expect it to be. I think probably you're right. I think I'll, I'll admit to being one who thought like Anderson would play instead of Willock because I thought Joe Willock looked really out of form. Mm. Um, I am slightly concerned that, Alex, it goes back to the point you've made in the past about why are we protecting players from injury by playing injured players. Um, Joe Willock does not look fit and hasn't looked fit for the past two or three weeks. Uh, Longstaff would know is playing with an injury. Um, but having said that, size right, like uh, after 30 minutes, he probably wouldn't have said, oh yeah, this is, this is the game plan. Um, but as soon as... Elliot Anderson comes on, that completely changes the dynamic because Lewis Hall suddenly looks to get forward with a bit more confidence. I think mm -hmm. he suddenly believed, well, there's someone here who can cover me. I'm not sure he believed Joe Willick was going to cover the space in behind him if he went forward. And suddenly we seem to have some fluency, kind of passing the ball and moving it around. I also think Anderson's one of the only players at Newcastle, Bob, Bob Bruno probably, who when he gets the ball will actually dribble out of mid with midfield and that causes other midfielders and defenders problems because mm -hmm. they don't know what he's going to do. And if you look at the goal, I think he attracts three players to him and plays the back heel to flick it away to get um, Barnes away. Like, I don't think another player, Bar Bruno, plays that pass in our team. Yep. Like, and I've, I'm not he wanting to heap pressure on him and say he's Bruno's replacement or whatever, but like, he is doing th the things that look like a Premier League footballer. Where previously, I think we were all a bit like, mm, is he going to be pre season? He looked up like he was flying. Now he's come back into the team at the end of the season. And again, he looks like he's a really strong player. Um, I, d I don't know what I'd do against Tottenham. I really, really don't because Jacob Murphy's nine minutes against Spurs last season is, is <laughs> worth remembering. Um, I'm not saying he's going to repeat that ever again <laughs> in his life. Um, but, you know, the tactic clearly worked. Whatever it was, it worked against Fulham. Um, let's see if he, maybe he's going to pull another rabbit out of his hat and have a different tactical setup for, for Spurs. But I think it's important that we do have people off the bench because, like you say, against Everton, it was clearly obvious with 20 minutes ago that we had nobody who we trusted to come on and bring on fresh legs for that game. And other we brought Willock on, and I thought the game was set up perfectly for him. Like, yeah. the game stretched, he could run him behind. He didn't really get the ball. And I think that was a, that was a bit of an issue against Everton him. Everton made five subs as well, and yeah. they did get a bit more of a foothold in the game. Did he not get a clipped? Did Willock's ankle not get clipped yesterday? Was it, was it a case of a, like, I thought that he... he this guy stood to the Achilles basically and had to come off, but that's but we're saying that 
we my, think that he was just injured. My um, Turkish commentators, that well, it was hard to, <laughs> hard to interpret what exactly was going on. <laughs> Thank you for flying back to, <laughs> to do the pod. Appreciate it. Really quickly on, on that Anderson moment, I actually think Bruno threads a very fast ball through to him, uh, which you'd expect Bruno to do, but it says a lot that Bruno trusted Anderson with men around him. Yeah to receive the ball. There are other Newcastle players and midfielders that Bruno looks up and sees them there and just thinks, no way, I'm going to have to pick a different option here. So, you know, the fact that he has the confidence of a player like that probably speaks a lot to, to, how, to how good he is and the fact that his, his, his teammates trust him in that situation. Um, back to the points I was was making about, about the team, it's, it, it's a fine balance, isn't it? Because, like Stephen says, had it been nil-nil or... Newcastle got beat, which I don't think they deserve to get beat based on the overall game, then we are definitely sitting here saying, Eddie Howe, or I'm at least making the, the point to you all or asking for opinions from you all, you know, he's got to start playing his best team. And I think Anderson makes more sense because he's he's just back from an injury that's taken an age to recover from. Mm. I think that one made a lot more sense. I think there's there's a real question there, short and long term, about Harvey Barnes, not about his performances. Performances have been unbelievable, but does Howe actually want him starting games from the left because he likes Gordon so much on that left-hand side? Like, he wants inverted wingers. He wants Gordon to be cutting in on his right. He wants the defenders not to know which way Gordon's going to go. Um, it, it's a really interesting one, whether Howe's first choice front three in his head is always going to have Anthony Gordon on the left or if it's going to be Gordon on the right for Barnes. And I thought one of the really promising things yesterday was that when Gordon went on the right, he caused carnage. You know, yeah. the, the disallowed goal... Um, is a cross from from Gordon where the, he's, the man stands him up and he like you know classic winger play just drops a shoulder goes round him like he's not there and puts a brilliant ball in which ends up um, causing chaos in the Fulham box and Sharp puts it in and you know Gordon on the right did look really really good to me but How has just been so uh, determined not to do that all season it is going to be really interesting that lineup against Spurs because it's it's great having an impact thirty eight million pound impact player like. Harvey Barnes, but you only need not to win a couple of games for people to say, fucking hell, you got a £38 million pound player mm. on the bench. When's he going to play? When's he going to come on? Um, you have to say, you have to agree with you, Si, that, you know, Eddie Howe was right yesterday. It worked. It worked really well. And Charlotte, you want to make the point, don't you, about how we finished that game compared to how we finished against Everton? Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. Um, so I, I think the disallowed goal is really interesting to me in, in both games, in Everton and against Fulham yesterday, because it felt like it took the wind out of our sails entirely on Tuesday night. It felt like after that, we just couldn't get back into it. Confidence was shot. Um, there was, the, it, it just felt like we're not going to make anything happen here. Whereas yesterday, it was goal, perfectly good goals disallowed. And and it was, a, you know, offside kind of against Everton. It's, it's really, really tight offside. That felt like a pretty, a, a decent enough goal perfectly good goal you know uh yesterday disallowed for being elbowing him in the back of the head even though he's going to go nowhere near the ball instead of instead of wind out the sails balloon deflating games over the team just responded immediately they didn't hang around expecting that the goal would stand they, they you know it's almost like in that tuesday to saturday period um to the point made earlier about you know jason tyndall saying you know get back it's it's not going to be allowed there's just a switch in mentality. It's a, okay, if this isn't allowed, it's fine because we're just going to create another chance. We're going to do something else with it. And within four minutes, you know, Harvey Barnes gets the ball to Bruno who just who just whacks it into the back of the net. And I think that mentality and that ability to kind of, okay, it doesn't matter. We'll just score another one. It changed the, uh, between Everton and Fulham was a complete, it was a complete shift for me and ending the game with that kind of confidence and that kind of, on that kind of high, it bodes very well for next week, I think. I think just on, on the Barnes point, it is, it is an interesting one because yeah, obviously we've paid all that money for a player that you think you should be playing a bit more, but he was out for so long. So we've kind of protected him a little bit and he, he did start on Tuesday. So he's come back out of the team and come off the bench on Saturday. But if you look at the other teams in the top six, they're regularly bringing 30 to 40 million pound subs yeah. off the bench. It's what we want to be. I'm, I'll admit our squad isn't there yet and we don't have the luxury of keeping our 40 million pound lads on the bench. But in theory, that's what the signing was about, is about a, a player that's a squad player. He wasn't necessarily signed to, to start every week. And yes, that goes back to that. Was that transfer window done correctly with hindsight? Pre presumably not. But I think it's fine to have him as a rotation player and it's fine to have him as competition for Gordon. We need a right winger desperately. We need two. Yeah. But... 
I'm, I'm okay with it. He's brilliant off the bench and he, he wins his games and sometimes that's the best way to use him and there'll be other games where it's right to start him and, he can, and, and it just depends how we're going to approach the game. I think for this one, the approach was kind of proven to be to be the right one. Yeah, I do feel like it's sort of... We're, I hate bingo card out ahead of schedule. Um, it's almost like ahead of schedule having Harvey Barnes on the bench, isn't it? Because we haven't got the kind of squad depth everywhere else. We don't have the rotation everywhere else available. It's just that one one position that we've got two really great players that we can rotate a, a bit. And, um, and yeah, eventually that is where we probably want to get to. We want there to be competition for spots. We want there to be mint players we want to be able to be in a cup final and bring on 160 million pounds worth of players in the 70th minute we, that's presumably where we want to be but m- maybe just not quite yet because the rest it's, it's, it's sort of the balance isn't quite there so at the minute we've got Paul Dummett and Matt Ritchie <laughs> yeah, coming Matt off the bench Ritchie. still <laughs> we have to talk about this game um some more because one of the key things that happened uh, so, according to Marco Silva, was that Newcastle are playing terribly, Fulham are dominating the game, and it's only a matter of time until they score. Uh, Martin Dubravka goes down twice injured in the second time. Eddie Howe brings the lads across, all of them, the outfield players, for what can only be described as a severe bollocking. And after that point, pretty much, Newcastle control the game and deserve to win. Marco Silva not happy, Fulham fans not happy, Charlotte is this the return of old school Newcastle? Not only are they controlling games, not only are they keeping clean sheets, but they're also doing the, the little dark arts things to try and extract any value or advantage that they can during games. Yeah, 100%. So we have been crying out for it this season. Where has where has the shithousing Newcastle gone of last season? Where has the kind of riling up the opposition, doing whatever they can to snatch whatever they can from games gone? We we praised it last year. There were, there were reams of articles written about how um, brilliant it was that that we managed games in that way and and we really got under the skin of opponents and gave ourselves the advantage that way and it's just gone this season we haven't seen any kind of uh, people our players kind of look meek we haven't done anything exciting on the sidelines you know mad dog has been has been a, a a tame a tame dog i don't know um but yesterday yeah what it did feel like the return to that a little bit and i, d- I don't know if i don't know if our resp- our the way that we've kind of like backed off that kind of shithousery was a response to how much we were getting attention for it last season and we we don't want that to be the sum total of of our games and our game plans but using it in um, strategic ways is 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 really important and I felt like we did that yesterday Martin Dubravka goes down with a sore leg and the team is pulled around Eddie Howe and he is furious you could see it on the screen he's he his mouth was so angry and covered in spittle and he was shouting at them and and we know from Bruno's interview after that he said he said to them you are not Newcastle United um, and that's pretty damning. Like that's pretty, pretty damning. And then to go back out and and change the game in the way that we did was, was good that we responded like that. Because as I was saying to Alex earlier, I think I would have just been like, I'm going to go home. This is, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I shouldn't be here. But it, it, I do feel like it's the return of those kind of little, little ways that we can get under the skin of opponents. And I just, I mean, Joe Linton's the king of it and he's obviously out for the rest of the season. So we, we really miss that, but I'm, I'm all for it. Not every game, all game, but to, to, to make those tweaks and to do whatever we can to, to snatch whatever we can. I, just, just do it. Just to provide some context there. Um, so Bruno does an interview post game with, Brazilian TV, I think, or a Brazilian uh, football journalist. And she brilliantly isn't bound by the conventions of UK-based football journalists where you basically make a statement to a player and let them finish the sentence. There's no questions <laughs> there. She's, she actually asked some really good questions, and Bruno, being the honest guy he is, answers them really well. And she said to him, um, it, it seems like you got a real telling off at, at nil-nil. It, it, you know, what What did Eddie Howe say to you? And normally players would just be like, oh, well, you know, the gaffer told us some honest <laughs> home truth and stuff. And, and he went, you know, Bruno said, honestly, he said, um, we got told we are too slow off the ball, 
too slow on the ball, too slow moving the ball, <laughs> too slow, too slow between the lines in midfield, and that this isn't Newcastle United and this isn't the Newcastle United that the manager expected to see. It's really, really honest, but also really fucking cutting, like Charlotte said. That's a real public bollocking in front yeah. of not just everyone in the stadium, but everyone in telly, because we're what we, we saw it and we're talking about it. It's it's a real takedown of his of his side. And as the uh, interview that Charlotte alluded to on Match of the Day or, or wherever said, you know, how is a, you know, he's a pretty calm guy in the stadium. He doesn't really get involved in touchline antics. He doesn't ever really lose his temper. But I, I, I totally understand why he'd lost his temper because in that opening 20 minutes, um, Fulham had had 76% possession, which isn't a problem in itself, but we'd allowed eight so shots and six corners. Um, Fulham, I think, had an XG of one from that opening 20 minutes as well. Uh, Bruno has gives a real insight into just how brutal how was uh Stephen? yeah no i think i think you can see on uh, match of the day when the the interviewer says oh you know that's the angriest we've ever seen you in public with your players um the the bit that you can see i'm not a lip reader but you can make out what he's saying which is like that's not a performance like and he, he's quite he's quite clear with them like that he's not he's not accepting what they're putting out in front and i think people think you know the calm polite demeanor of eddie howe means that he's not cut through it. he's not like cut out in some people's eyes for like top level management but that shows that he is he's gathered the players over and it, in my opinion yes it was proper shit how's read like i don't think martin dubrovka is as injured the second time as he was the first time etc i think he's just been told by tyndall just have yourself a sit down son um and uh those two three minutes have clearly got into the players like they've clearly accepted that like what they're what they're putting out there isn't right now it probably took three or four minutes for it to have an impact. And maybe you could even say it took 10 minutes and will it going off and Anderson coming on for it to have a real, real impact because he clearly has a chat with Anderson before Anderson goes on. But um, it, I think it's brilliant that they have the confidence in what he was saying to be able to react to it. Not, as Charlotte says, some of us would go, oh, like, oh, I'm, I'm so scared. I'm just going to do everything really, really simple. Everything to easy ball basics. They didn't. They were like, right, okay, we'll respond to that. They thing is it wasn't like it wasn't like Phil Jones getting his whole city players at half time yeah. on the pitch and doing all that theatrics it wasn't like Pep or Arteta on Amazon documentaries doing deliberately ridiculous mm. kind of half time bollockings it it was it's a sort of bollock and you know you'd expect Alex Ferguson to have given the man new team when they wonder performed back but obviously that would be normally behind closed doors it, ne it needed to happen at half time but they've just thought you know we absolutely have to do this now we can't have another 20 minutes of this so such was the public setting. It just had to be done. It, but it was a necessary bollock and it really was like a, a good manager tells his players that, that this is absolutely unacceptable. I don't think there was anything theatrical, theatrical about it. Mm. I don't think it was for show. I think it needed to happen and it had the impact it was supposed to have. It, it, it should, like, you have to be clear though, it's not a good thing. Like we're talking about it. It's a good, it's a good reaction and, and how has really earned his money there as a manager by <laughs> producing such a differentiation and performance that he's really found the right words in the right time and having the kind of confidence to do what they did and forcing Dubravka to go down for, for you know, what is essentially, you know, a, like a kind of loophole in the rules. So we can get really annoyed at West Ham taking a quick free kick last week when the referee should be stopping the game. Well, the other side of that is although Newcastle haven't broken any rules here, it's not within the spirit of the game to just fake an injury to give your players a bollocking, but I fully support it and back it and fuck everyone else who, who doesn't <laughs> like it. <laughs> but it's not a good thing to have to do that. And I think it, it should be said that how isn't just probably going to be like, we are this week, fucking buzz and bring on Spurs, all that kind of stuff. He's probably thinking that that's a real worry that that uh, they haven't had loads of time to prepare for that game, but their performance was so unexpect, uh, unacceptable for the first 20 that they've, he's had to take really drastic measures there and drastic action to try and elicit the reaction, which he ultimately got. And it's a good thing. Um, I think we'll leave it there for this podcast. There's loads more to talk about. Um, so good job we have uh, the review podcast later on today for patrons only so if you want to hear more about this game the things we haven't discussed come and join us on, on that one it's only on the uh, five pounds a month tier uh, link in the description to this podcast thanks to you uh, Audi, Charlotte, Sai. Uh, thanks to everybody for watching we'll have another free podcast through the week as we always do and then we'll join you again uh, this time next week for hopefully a mighty victory against Spurs speak to you all then bye bye this podcast is brought to you by Aspers Casino Newcastle, home of the £4 pint on match day. That's all Newcastle home games and any televised Newcastle fixture. The offer applies from midday until midnight on all draft beers. Be gamble aware, over 18s only. Visit begambleaware.org. Uh, be drink aware and for details and T's and C's, visit aspersnewcastle.co.uk.